Creativity Inc. by Ed Catmull. Welcome to my channel. My name is Samuel and I want to make self-growth normal. If you want to make self-growth normal, because I don't want to do it alone, and who doesn't want to make self-growth normal, then make sure to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. And it helps with SEO and ranking and all this other stuff, and I really appreciate it because so much work goes into making these videos. This book is just, <laughs> it's like, Culture, culture, company, culture, communication, creativity, culture. Written by Ed Catmull and Amy Wallace, I think. He's the former president of Pixar and Disney Animation Studios. So let's talk a little bit more about this. Let's talk about each chapter of this book, Creativity Inc. Chapter one talks about his history coming up and where Pixar is today. Chapter two talks about where he kind of went to NYIT, or I guess, NYIT. Does anyone call it that over there? I don't know. And then how he got a job in Lucasfilm after Star Wars, which was gonna change film forever, ever. And by forever, ever, I mean forever, ever, ever. Chapter three talks about how it was actually really difficult for Catmull to learn how to manage people and how he started to improve it. And where Steve Jobs came into the mix. After Toy Story was released, The Terminator and Jurassic Park were released, and every one afterwards was like, okay, actually guys, this is a very good thing, this computer animation stuff. I think it belongs in Hollywood, okay? Chapter four is about smashing the like button if you haven't already, and then establishing the identity of Pixar. Chapter five, in this chapter, he does talk about how getting the right people and chemistry is more important than getting the right idea. The author has been to so many places He's talked at, in so many conferences and stuff, and he has had asked that, asked like which one matters more to the people in the crowd, and half of them raise their hands for each one every time in terms of what's more important, the people or the idea. If it had to be one, I I don't know. I I I'm more of like an idea guy. I'm not really much of a people guy. But you really do need the people for the idea to come into place. And. People are where the ideas come from anyway. Even if that's not entirely true, because I could see why anyone would say that. The people are where the ideas come into fruition. The minds is where the ideas come into fruition, but that's like 13 other video topics. But chapter five kind of zooms in on this and expands upon it, talking about the nature and dynamics of Pixar's brain trust sessions, where they give up control, give up the idea of all the power dynamics and simply sit down, but critique like every little piece by piece thing of like what each person does. They look at a film that you make, uh, you and your the other team or whatever, they really, really pick it apart but they make it as transparent, they're as transparent as they possibly can be. And it's, you know, your brain is, they're trusting their brain that it doesn't have anything to do with you. It just has to do with the art and Pixar. It's the ultimate Pixar goal. It's not your goal or my goal. There's no competition or anything like this. It has no selfish agenda, basically. It just wants to help. Chapter six zooms in on the brain trust, like the reasoning behind uh, how brain trust sessions kind of work. And a little bit of the behavioral sources of creative insecurity? Chapter seven focuses on, I don't know if I quite grasped this, the beast and the baby, but apparently it's its just, and I agree with this anyway, it's just essential to kind of find conflict and use it as leverage to grow. So many books I talked about in late July were obsessed with this. Chapter eight is about the relationship between creativity and randomness. Plenty of specific example examples are also talked about, by the way, throughout the whole book. Recall from the production of movies like Toy Story and Monsters, Inc. and The Incredibles and Bugs Life. Some of these concepts are talked about to excruciating depths in uh, Nassim Taleb's Black Swan, not the productions of those movies, but the creativity and randomness. He said that the silver lining of a major meltdown is that it gives managers a chance to send clear signals to the employees about the company's values. Chapter nine is like a dive. I feel like I've been using that word too much. Into higher, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna find a different one, guys. Into hierarchies and positions and like the hidden emotions and stuff like that, which cause problems like these. Chapter 10, what I think stood out about chapter 10 was that they literally have the team's experience things together for, they had it for up. Like they literally brought a real life ostrich into the studio for inspiration, a real life ostrich. And for finding Nemo, a lot of the staff actually were in the process of getting their scuba licenses. This is because when you feel what those things are like, those feelings project onto the creations and people can see that. And it works because the staff is experiencing them during, or I guess before, the creations. Chapter 11 is about the future of creativity. The 
creativity of the future, or I guess both. A lot of this has to do with fear and ego, like so much of this book, and being able to acknowledge the complications. It's not just people skills, it's improving your emotional intelligence through the experiences that teach you like, I'm here for you. There is a problem, but we will fix it. Doesn't matter who caused it, that person already has enough to worry about. So many creative companies at the top, like Pixar, Apple, Google, seem to have this culture of like these people creating and facing their problems together. And I also really admire my mom. <laughs> I really admire how many different aspects of growth and business and life that this book addresses all at the same time. Chapter 12 talks about more history with Pixar and Steve Jobs with uh, Disney Animation Studios. Chapter 13, it's about this thing called Notes Day. And uh, I'll just say this, Notes Day is one of the most spectacular corporate culture improvement ideas. It's actually kind of a tearjerker how much it impacted Pixar in just one day. Chapter 14 is... <laughs> it's this wonderful, ch it's this, like, it's an, um, it's a, oh my gosh. There are no words. It's a chapter about how Steve Jobs changed in so many ways over the years and like in ways that no one ever seems to talk about. A lot of people seem to hate on Steve Jobs because he was really harsh, but I don't know of anyone who worked longer with Steve Jobs than Ed Catmull. And I don't remember the last time I heard a book about business that was written since 1977 in the last like month or something that didn't say anything about Apple. So I like to think that it's probably worth checking out what a guy has to say who worked with Steve Jobs for 25 years straight. Who else has worked for Steve? Who, who, who? Who else has done that? Quotes. Money is only one measurement of a thriving company and usually not the most meaningful one. Whatever these forces are that make people do dumb things, they are powerful, they are often invisible, and they often lurk even in the best of environments. When downsides coexist with upsides, as they often do, people are reluctant to explore what's bugging them for fear of being labeled complainers. People need to be wrong as fast as they can. Failure is painful, and our feelings about this pain tend to screw up our understandings of its worth. We must meet unexpected problems with unexpected responses. The past should be our teacher, not our master. The attempt to avoid failure makes failure more likely. Driving the train doesn't set its course. The real job is laying the track. Direction one. I recommend this book for anyone who loves Pixar movies so much that they're wondering what kind of work goes into making them. But I recommend this book probably more for anyone in management, particularly like, especially in, in some sort of like a creative based company, media, something like that, who's looking to kind of sharpen their management skills. There's a lot of psychology and all this other stuff that has like nothing. You would not expect it to have anything to do with this type of stuff, like the unseen forces. What's it, what is it, the unseen forces that get in the way of creativity? I think that's what it says on the title, of, on the cover of the book. But direction two, if you like this book, I think you would definitely love The Culture Code by Daniel Coyle. It seriously expands on the corporate culture aspects of this book, which are <laughs> so huge. Creativity Inc. by Ed Catmull and Amy Wallace. There's a link in the description if you guys want to check it out and read the reviews, that and all the other books that I mentioned in this video as well. If there are any other books that you guys want me to check out and review, please let me know in the comments below. Also, let me know if you checked out this book and you liked it, but hey, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, because I don't know why people watch this far into my videos and they don't subscribe, but if you have subscribed and you want to turn on that notification bell to receive a notification every time I drop a new video, that would mean the world to me. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. You can find me everywhere and I will see you then.